Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Today's video is a continuation of a short series where I'm doing complete start to finish edits using Luminar Neo. In the very first video of this series, I did a very basic, simple landscape edit. Today we're doing another landscape image, but I think you'll see that this landscape image is a bit more challenging. As you can see, it was a rather drab, boring day. Uh, the image doesn't have a lot of color to it. It's also very flat and the sky is relatively boring. So my challenge here is to try to make it a bit more colorful, add a bit more contrast and to replace the sky. Also, someone asked me how Luminar Neo does at editing Fujifilm RAW files. So I purposely chose a Fujifilm RAW file for this edit. This is a relatively old image shot with the Fujifilm X-T1, but it does have that X-Trans sensor that some post-processing applications have a difficult time editing. So we're going to jump right into it. I like to go right to tone. So I'm going to go to the develop raw tool right away. And again, if you're not editing a raw file, it won't say develop raw. It will just say develop and it will look slightly different. You won't see camera profiles at the top like I do. I think I'm just going to stay with this uh, profile, this Luminar default profile. And I'm just going to jump right down to the light section here. So we're going to reposition this and I'm going to go to highlights like I typically do. And I'm going to pull those down until I start to see some detail in that sky. Even though I'm replacing the sky, I just want to do these edits as I normally would. And I'm going to open up the shadows until I see more detail in the darkest parts of the shadows. Then I'm going to go to the blacks and whites and get a black and white point. And the way I like to do it is I like to turn on the clipping indicators. And to do that, I'll hit the J key on my keyboard. Now you don't see anything on the image yet because I'm not clipping yet. But if you'll, uh, if I push up the whites, eventually you'll start to see some red come in. That means I'm starting to clip the highlights. So I'm going to back that off until I'm not clipping the highlights at all. And then I'm going to go to the blacks and I'm going to move that to the left. And eventually you'll see, you may see some blue. There you go, some blue come in. So I'm starting to crush the shadows. And I'm just going to back that off as well. So I've added some contrast actually with those two sliders. And you can see it's a lot more contrasty than the original RAW file. So I'm good with that. Um, I'm not going to do anything with curves. I am going to jump down to color. And I want to add quite a bit of saturation right at this point. So we'll do that. Now we're trying to make it more colorful. And I'm going to go to sharpness. It, it doesn't seem to be too sharp. It was kind of a hazy day. I want to say hazy, maybe a bit of a fog in the air. So it kind of made it not as sharp as I typically would want it. So that's starting to look pretty good. So let's see a before after. I could click on this little eyeball here. There's before. And there's after. So right away, I think it looks a lot better. Now at this point, I'm going to replace the sky. So I'm going to jump down to the sky AI filter, push that up and sky selection. Uh, those of you who watch my videos know that I drone on and on about Ocu drone skies. I think they're the best uh, third party skies available. And uh, in the description below this video, I'll have a link to their website. You could check out their skies i also have a discount code if you're interested in purchasing them let's see what cotton candy skies look like and let's just pick one like just like that give it a second to replace and there it replaced the sky you could see i left the clipping indicators on and you could see how i'm clipping right there but that's one of the skies and you can just click through and try different skies and see if there's something here you like um, I wanted to add more color to it, so maybe I'll try to find one that has a bit of color in it. This one. I kind of like that one, although when it relit the scene, you see it, it made it considerably darker. But let's try this one maybe. But I could re-relight -re the scene. Let's go with that one, because I'll show you how to re-light the scene after you've added the sky. So I've added this, this sky. All right. Again, I Accudrone. There's a lot of different categories of skies I could choose from, but for sake of time, let's just go with that cotton candy sky number 23. All right. Now, let's go to 
um, sky orientation. First of all, you have a horizon position. And when you move this, you're just moving the sky basically up and down. Where is the horizon line? And then below that, you have vertical position. This really looks like it does pretty much the same thing, although you could see this line here is more abrupt than it was with this one. All right. So you just move those till it blends properly around these trees. But you can see I'm starting to be getting some haloing on those trees. We'll handle that in a moment. Here's horizontal position. This just kind of pivots it to the right or to the left. You also could flip it if you want to match the lighting in the scene better. You could flip it. I think it's fine that way. That's sky orientation. Now let's go to mask refinement and see what we could do about this haloing up here. Um, first of all, we have three sliders, global, closed glass, and fixed details. What I like to do is work these from the bottom up. Um, if I move this to left, it seemed to make it worse. If I move it to the right, it seems to make it... <laughs> doesn't really do much when I move it to the right, to tell you the truth. Actually, if I wait a while and let it render, it looked actually kind of, looked a little better. Yeah, it's starting to look better. Those fixed details, we'll just keep moving that to the right. Now we'll close gaps, try that to the right. And it's starting to look a lot better. And then global, move that to the right. There, now we're starting to really look a lot better. Got rid of the haloing. I think it looks pretty good. I don't see any more haloing. So, mask refinement, if you ever have haloing, particularly around branches of trees, you go here, and personally, again, I like to work them from the bottom up. Uh, it seems to be able to zero in on good settings uh, more effectively when you work them from the bottom up. Screen relighting, this is where I thought it's a little bit kind of dark. Um, relight strength, if I move it to the right, it's just gonna make it darker. If I move it to the left, it's less dark, but not, not too much. I'm gonna add some saturation. And there's not a human in here, so I don't have to uh, worry about that slider. The reflection itself, uh, the reflection amount, and the water blur. Now the water was very still and you could see it's really not blurring out the existing trees and the building and whatnot. So I do not want to add any water blur. Now the overall image still is pretty dark. This is where the sky adjustments. I'll jump down here and we're going to go to brightness right here. I'll brighten that up a little bit. Maybe add a bit of warmth and we'll go maybe I don't want to add any haze, no grain, no defocus. Okay, so we're good. All right, so I'm done with the sky. I think it looks pretty good. Um, still, the overall image is a little dark. Now, I could, I'll close that down. I could add another develop tool adjustment. Notice it doesn't say AI because I already used the AI tool. It's right here. I could jump to this tool, but something unusual happens. Uh, if I go to this tool, I'll open it up, you'll see the sky disappeared, and it it kind of changed the lighting totally. So it is kind of folly to come back here and try to readjust the develop raw tool because we lost the sky we just added, and it we lost that relighting that made everything darker. So I think we're better off going back to the tools and adding a new develop tool and go to light and this like pull up exposure now we're starting to clip so then we'll go to the blacks and whites here and i'll take the whites down to that red just about goes that's pretty much i could jump back to the light as well and try to bring highlights down there we go so i think that is a little better um now I'm going to go try something. I'm going to go to a super contrast and move that to the right there. I kind of like what that did. All right, now we're getting somewhere. Keep adding a little more. So I think that is pretty good. I kind of like that. Now one thing I want to do is there's like floating lily pads or leaves here. I, I'm going to get rid of those. So I'm going to go to the erase tool. And I already have a brush. Maybe get a little yeah, about like that. I'm going to just paint on this, paint on this. 
and paint on this over here. And then I'm going to click on the erase button and get rid of that. So I really don't want those down there. I think that's better. Now I'm going to then go down to the color tab and specifically I want to go to this HSL section and I want to drop down, go to this drop down and go to luminance. And what I want to do is I want to add tonal contrast uh, between the different colors. Specifically what I like to do is go to the HSL tab and then go to the luminance section of the HSL tab and I almost always will take yellow and make it brighter. So it's effectively making anything that is yellow in the image brighter and parts of the grass are yellow so that kind of made that brighter. Then I'll go to green and make that darker and of course parts of the trees, parts of the grass are green and it makes that darker. And you'll notice that when you do that it just kind of adds some tonal variance in those kind of homogenous sections. So here's before and here's after. Here's before and here's after. And if you're looking right in here, I think you'll see what I'm talking about. There's before and there's after. Now typically I like the skies kind of like a rich blue, darker blue. So I'll go to the blue slider and pull that down and make that a little darker. And then if I feel that a color needs a little more pop, I'll go to the saturation section of the HSL tab and then I'll, you know, maybe make oranges a little, a little more colorful, greens, stuff, blues, just pop those up a little bit, add a little more color to that. I think that's good. And details. Um, it's actually decent now, although it was pretty soft a while ago. Um, it's, it's decent, but I'll go to the details and I like to work this from the bottom up also. I'll go to the sharpen slider first. Add some sharpening. Got to wait a second for it to render. Some large details, medium details. Just a little bit. Just eyeballing it. No like formula here. I heard of some photographers that they put large details on like 15, medium on 10. Small, like they automatically do that. Um, I just eyeball it and do it for, you know, differently for every image, I guess you could say. So there's details. There's really no noise. It was shot at the lowest native ISO of, of Fujifilm X-T1, which is ISO at 200. And you can see there really isn't any noise. So I'm not worried about that. I think I'm done. I'm just going to go to the vignette. And I like to add a darker vignette. One thing I will open is advanced settings here. Let me add this darker vignette first. And then choose subject. What do you want the vignette centered on? Well, I want it centered on the building. The building happens to be bullseye, but I just wanted to show you this. Um, if I hit the subject over here, I could just click on it, let's say, and it will center the vignette around that. But I want this vignette centered around the building. So I'll add a darker vignette. And then you could affect here. Let me add a real dark one. Affect the roundness. You can see I still have those clipping indicators on. So when I turn the vignette on, it shows that I'm crushing some shadows down there. That's right. I'm going to turn that off. The, hit the J key again. Um, add some, you know, feathering, inner light, make the in, inner part a little brighter. Then I'll just back off the vignette like that. And there is my fully edited image. There's before and there's after. There's before and there is after. So I think you'll agree that uh, Luminar Neo does a great job on Fujifilm RAW files. And again, there's all different ways you could go. There's so many different tools. It's impossible to show everything in one video. But I think this is a decent edit done on a rather drab image and made it a lot more interesting to look at. Um, something that's, you know, you'd be more proud of, I guess, for lack of a better way to put it. Um, again, I will continue this series doing other types of images. I already did one on portraiture, and I have a playlist where all these, where all these videos reside, and that playlist will be listed in the description below this video. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>